Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. We are back with another that chapter. This one is titled The Podcaster Stalked to Death by an Obsessed Fan. Man, people stalk. Just do people not have better things to do? All right. I'm excited for today's story. Let's go ahead and get into it. Go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, come up with someone special. Let's get creeped the fuck out. Like, I have a feeling it's going to be creepy as shit. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this video, we're going to talk about a very successful woman. She was a successful podcaster, but she got some uh, extremely unwanted attention from a very crazed fan. This oh, went shit. on for almost a year until it ended in the most tragic way possible. Before we get into it, if you would like to see new crime videos every week, please subscribe because this is all about that. Chapter, now let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. In the early hours of Friday, the 10th of March, 2023, a call came in to the Redmond Oh shit, so this just happened. Oh, fuck. Okay. Police department, and that's a Redmond just outside of Seattle, Washington. Now this call, it came from a fairly fancy, wealthy, you know, upscale neighborhood. It's in the same area where the Microsoft headquarters, they're located there. And the house that we will get into, the house was worth $1.2 million. The 911 call that was made to the police, that came in at 1.45 a.m. $1.2 million? I got the same face, Mike. A woman had ran from that house. She had booked it running to a neighbor's house to call the police there to let them know that an intruder, a stalker, had broken into the house. Okay. That woman told the police that she had heard shots and to get there, like, real quick. Now, the Redmond Police Department, it was... I have heard gunshots. You need to get the fuck out of Only three minutes away from the house. So they got there pretty sharpish. When the police arrived, neighbors had begun... Three minutes away from the house. Only took them 15 minutes to get there. ...and gathering, kind of, you know, on the street. But the house itself, it was dark and it was, like, eerily quiet. Hmm. I don't like eerily really So quiet. with the reports of a, of a shooter in the house, shots had been fired, officers, they gathered up outside the home, they drew their sidearms, and they announced their presence to anybody who was inside, inside that house. However, inside that house, they would find bodies, as in more than one. And this would be the ending, the tragic and terrible ending to a story that had gone on for almost a year. This wasn't the first time the police... Bodies? Like, bodies? <laughs> What the f oh, fuck. ...have been called to this very dress, if you can believe that. Someone had been watching it for months, looking through the windows, calling to the door, following the people who live there as they traveled across America. And finally, this very night, they had gone inside. Fuck that. 33-year-old Zore Sadegi was originally from Iran, as was her husband, 35-year-old Malid Nazeri. Mm -hmm. They had been married since 2011, both working in Tehran in um, software. They were both software developers, rising up the ranks of the companies they worked in in Iran until they both, the married couple, they moved to the United States of America. Millet, he... Hell yeah, they sound like they are living the dream. This, yeah, it's going to be awful. See, I'm, I'm telling you. Telling you, if he wouldn't have told us how awful it was at the beginning, you, I would, I'd, I'd be telling you now because that sounds amazing. The more amazing it sounds, the worse it's going to get. And this one got bad. He moved to the Seattle, Washington area in 2015 with his wife Zoe, following him a year later as a graduate student. Malid worked for Google and most recently as lead software engineer for Amazon in Redmond. Let's see, lead software engineer, Amazon, full time. Uh, software engineer, Google, senior software engineer, K, uh, CDK Global, senior software engineer, Caspian Company, senior software engineer, software engineer, and Java programmer. 
accomplished a lot. Washington. Zoe Ray, a PhD student at the university. Uh, software engineer. University of Washington, Tacoma, six years, six months, PhD student, graduate student, researcher, University of Mazandarabadabuba. It's in Iran. I, I'm not good with pronunciations. I'm not going to try. And data analyst and Java developer. So they was both Java developers at one time. That's cool. The of Washington, Tacoma, and then as a software engineer at a mortgage company. Both were self-styled techies who would move you know, across the world to be at the very heart of it in the Seattle area. And that house, it was a beautiful place and cost a pretty it penny. Is. But software engineers working for the companies that they did, they were successful. Come on. So, so far so good for this young couple. And Zoray's mother, she would move in with them too into uh, that very house as we can you know, just presume that she's probably getting on a little bit, a little bit in years. Yeah. Now this is when the trouble began. Now this part, it's a little bit vague with all of the news reports that have been released. But Zoray appeared on a podcast or on a, a, a podcast that, that was streaming. And the podcast was about gaining employment in, you know, the, the tech industry and the software injury. And it seems like the podcast was specifically for, for Persian people from people. Uh, from people from Iran and that sort of thing. Fair enough, right? I mean, she worked in the industry. Her husband was getting pretty big in the industry. She would know everything somebody would need to do. Yeah. Someone heard her speak about this on this podcast, and they liked what they heard, but not in a normal, healthy way at all. It appears now he may have heard this on the app Clubhouse. Now, Clubhouse is a fairly new app. It's only been up since around... 2020 it's when you have to be invited to join and essentially it's an audio only thing people you join rooms and people are talking about different topics and blah 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 and apparently this podcast this discussion was never freaking heard of it bro i'm not gonna lie to you i i, I could sit here and act like i know i don't know i don't know shit played on clubhouse So Zoray was speaking on clubhouse about this very topic and who just so happened to tune in 38-year-old Ramin Koda Haram Razai. He's got a shit face. Ramin was originally, much like Zore and Malid, from Iran. And he was a trucker who lived in Texas, in the Houston area. Mm -hmm. He had been married for seven years to a woman named Nida, and they had a daughter together. The, his story kind of almost mirrors Zore and Milad's story. They, you know, him and his wife, they married in Iran before moving to America. Now they had actually divorced back in 2018, Ramin and his wife, well ex-wife, but they, it still seems that they remained close. In fact, one thing we'll, we'll find about Ramin is that he, it seems like he didn't have very many friends at all. His wife would say they would talk all the time and he would tell her about, um, you know, romances he had, women he was seeing, and she would say he was telling her this, not as like some kind of evil ex trying to like twist because... the knife him, but more like he had nobody that was his only friend. That's sad, though. Uh, I know, he's probably a shitty murderer, but that is sad. Your ex-wife has to be your best friend that you talk to about. I mean, that's, that's fucked. Nobody else to talk to. A lonely guy who, as a trucker, he would go on long, you know, road trips, right? And while he was driving, perhaps he tuned in to the Clubhouse app, uh, app you know, listening to people speaking in his native tongue, in, in per, uh, Farsi, Persian. Yeah. And then one day, one time, he heard 33-year-old Zoray. And Raman and Zoray, they sparked up a friendship, yapping away about this and that, talking on, on Clubhouse. She followed up, he followed up with her after she, after she had spoken one day. Now, why even tune into that discussion? He was a 38-year-old trucker. What interest would he have in getting jobs in the tech industry? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe he just liked hearing people speak his native tongue. Maybe. But anyway, regardless. Or maybe, I mean, he was just fascinated with it. I mean, I don't work in it, but it kind of fascinates me. I would listen to it. Would I ever do it? Probably not, but maybe it just fascinated him. They started speaking away, and, you know, she is somebody who had a bit of a of a platform a bit of an online presence she was only more than happy to help out chat they spoke fairly often uh, apparently okay. even meeting up one time even though she lived all the way in seattle he lived in texas but he would travel all the time way too many times as you will see 
But Raman, it seemed like he was becoming a bit full on for for Zoe. It seemed like he wanted a little bit more than just a friendship. And then that's when Zoe cut him off. He had fallen for her, and she wasn't, you know, too keen on that at all. And she said, "Okay, let's." Stop this right here. Let's put it to bed. This can't end well. How right she, she was. He then began one of the most obsessive stalking campaigns of Zoe and her husband, Millard, you will ever hear. And so began the messages, the calls, the gifts, the knocking on the door. One time she even, Zoe even had a, had a business trip in Denver, from Seattle to Denver. He followed her. One particular time he called her over a hundred times. Man, get a fucking restraining order, or just shoot him in the face. Fuck it, just be done. Just be done with it. Shoot it. Just shoot him in the face. In one day, can you believe that? You know, and I mean, obviously, yes. what's the first thing? You're gonna turn off your phone. You're gonna bail. Yes, I can believe that. You wanna know why, Mike? You wanna know why, Mike? Because I watch your channel. <laughs> I watch Mr. Bones' channel. I, I watch Coffee House Crime. I believe that could happen. I believe 100%. Puts your phone off a wall, but she works in tech. She, she doesn't exactly just do that. So she would block all his numbers. She, he would still find a way to call her. She would block him on social media. She, he would still find a way to contact her. She would block all private numbers. He figured it out. How in fact he even got her phone number is a mystery. She never gave it to him. Every time they would contact when they were friends, they would talk online. In November, 2022, that's when she told him, all right, stop. Stop talking to me. You stop trying to contact me verbally. She said it twice. Two times. Stop. Obviously, he didn't listen. He would call nearby businesses asking for her. He would manage to get in contact with her, saying that he was in her neighborhood and that he was coming over. He would then go to nearby businesses in her neighborhood, go into them, use their phones to call her. Wow. Oh. He would call, cry, begging her to meet with him. He would all from a nearby inn and all kinds of shit. Oh no, oh no. Yeah, Mr. De, however you pronounce that, called from a nearby inn December 2nd, nearby inn December 3rd, I had surgery, left for Australia, came to my door and brought flowers a few minutes after left, the, I guess her old Oh man, left for Australia. Wow. Man, this is some stalking shit, bro. Good lord, I feel bad for anyone that ever has to go through anything like this. To feel like a prisoner in your own life because someone is too overly infatuated. That That's awful. He would call, cry, begging her to meet with him. He would message her saying, delete your Instagram or make it public so I can see too. Another particular time, he was parked in her neighborhood. He was watching her house. He saw her husband. He waited till her husband, Millard, left. He was going to Australia. And as soon as he left the house and was out of the area, he called her door with flowers. He is watching her all the time. He would send things like jewelry and neck scarf, which, you know, Zara would immediately give to the police and re report these incidents to the police, but nothing, nothing happened. In one report she made to the police, I can say now. So you want to report a feller giving you presents? Okay. <laughs> I just I, I see the conversation going that exact way. Yes, ma'am. What can we do for you? This fucker just keeps giving me stuff. This stuff. Oh, poor thing. I guarantee you, that's like that's how it went. Police don't care. If you feel uncomfortable, it don't matter if it seems stupid to the police or not. Do something, you know what I mean? She, she wrote how he threatened to show up into her front yard and light himself and her tree, which they had in the front yard, on fire. Fuck it. Tell him to do it. He said he would do this to prove that he would love her forever. And he said that nothing short of his own death would stop him from obsessing over her. As you can imagine, this absolutely wrecked havoc on her on her psychology. Yeah. One time uh, in January, she had to have a back surgery, and she was scared shitless because she knew that if she had surgery, she wouldn't be able to run if something happened. She developed uh, anxiety, insomnia. Her and her husband, Melody, became so fearful that he would one day break in and do 
God knows what to them. That knocking on the door and calling them just wouldn't wouldn't cut the mustard anymore. Unfortunately, we found out. On the 2nd of March, 2023, a bench warrant was issued for Ramin Kodakaram Razai's arrest. He was charged with one count of misdemeanor stalking and two counts of telephone harassment. The very next day, a judge granted uh, a temporary order of protection, with a hearing set for a non-temporary order of protection. So this was at the start of March. Zoray was requesting that this temporary order would last 99 years. She knew, you know, he would never stop. He had serious issues, but this wasn't her goddamn problem like to deal with. That's his, his problem. Yeah. Although whatever, you know, mad shit was going on in his head, he was dangerous at this point. Super. I don't think he had much of anything going through his head other than the stupidity that was his own brain. I mean, dude literally told her, the only thing that's going to stop me is if I'm dead. Like, that, I wouldn't take that as endearing. I'd take that as a fucking threat. I would have been like, you got set your fucking self on fire right there. That tree, I won't give a shit. I'll replant the fucking tree. Burn. That's just me. I'm an asshole, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And for her, you know, what it started off is just, you know, trying to help out, help out other people, help out people yeah. might, maybe who were in, who were in her situation, you know, give them a leg up, you know, it turned into getting the attention of this guy who turned out to be a full-blown psychopath. Now, one thing about Raman is he never had any prior arrests or anything like no history at all. Just down like nowhere. Something in him. So even though this order of protection was granted, there was one problem. The police in Redmond, they couldn't find him. They couldn't make contact with with Raman. Well, for one, he lived out of state. He lived in Texas. And two, as a truck driver, you never know where he is. Then, late on the 9th of March, he crept up this very quiet, leafy, residential street in his red truck. The road, it was on a hill. He glided his red truck up. Nobody spotted him. Nobody saw him. This was a, a Thursday night. Nobody would have been around to witness anything. How long he waited, how long he was- Alright, I just need to say, I have a feeling this is when things are buried to flip shit. Yeah, we only got like four minutes left, so. Give me just saying, I have a feeling this is when all the chaos is going to take part. And just go... To my brain. So. Let's prepare. See? See, see Mike's angry face? He's ready. He's like, yeah, let's do it. Watching that house? No one knows, but he had just been there the day before. What was going through his messed up mind, nobody knows. But at about 1.30 a.m., he got out of his truck and he started walking towards a house. A house he knew, you know, the, the surroundings very, very well. He'd been stalking it for months, and the day before, as I said, he had pretty much done a trial run of what he was about to do. And he found that one of the bedroom windows would give him access into the house. It appears he got in, and there he encountered Zoe Ray's oh. mother. They had some kind of altercation. And she managed though, to, to flee the house. She managed to book it. She ran out of the house. She ran to a neighbor's house, slamming on the door. And there, in there, she managed to call the police. But she would say that as she was running, she had heard shots ring out right behind her. Damn. Uh, the active hostage situation, the shooter is not detained. Redmond officers arrived real soon and drew their weapons with the reports of an active shooter who also happened to be an insane person. And it didn't take long for them to find the first person. As they drew out their sidearms, walked towards the house, called out Redmond Police Department, just at the front door, they found Millet. Now, he was still alive at the time, but he would pass away within, within minutes. He'd been shot once in the chest. He'd been shot and he'd managed to run, try and run out of the house to escape, but he collapsed just at the door. Police then went through the house, slowly calling out, checking every room, until they eventually got to the master bedroom. And there is where they found Zoe. She'd been shot. She'd been shot dead. And on the ground beside her lay this psycho. He, after shooting Milad and shooting Zoe while she was in bed, he turned the gun on himself. He said this would only end with his death, it shouldn't have had to end with hers, too. And it probably went out exactly as, as he hoped that they would go together. Which kind of makes this just all the more sickening. She'd done everything right. She'd contacted the police multiple times. At least 
He's going in the opposite direction. Fuck that dude. Man, and the police. Why? Why? You know? I understand. I get. I, I'm hip. I'm down. I, I got you, bud. You know what I mean? I know you can't. It's hard to find truck drivers. It's, it is. They're all over the place. And, you know, they, some of them, they don't really have. family to come back to some of them are just you know single guys no sense in having a family because they're hardly ever home but it sounded like this lady was going through some shit they should have stepped in and done something before that like even if they had to like put a apb out on his vehicle and have who the fuck ever arrest him fuck it do it there could have been so much stuff in january in December, filing the order in March. And I know I'm ignorant and naive, and I, I think that things should be done. And they probably can't be done that way. And I, I really don't care. In my head, they can't be. Okay, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. They both did everything right. And still, there was a guy who just couldn't take no from an, for an answer. A guy who had lost his mind and had then done one of the most hor horrific and disturbing acts of finally being so obsessed with somebody he had to, he couldn't stop. And eventually he broke in and murdered them. This is the absolute worst. I love you so much. You must die. No. Outcome. Um, it's not, hey, die for me. It's, hey, live for me. I love you. I want you to live. <laughs> oh. You know, for uh, a stalking case. The restraining order is uh, simply a piece of paper that allows officers to uh, take enforcement action should a suspect violate uh, the court order but a piece of paper does not protect a, a person when someone is intent on causing them harm. It's a real tragic story of, as I said, you know, people who did everything right, and still, the, you know, Zoe just happened to have a presence one day, you know, a platform to speak and try and help people, and one person just latched onto it, like a goddamn tick. Uh, and eventually was just sucking the life out of her until he had to end her life and end his own, because he killed her because he was so obsessed with her, but it seems like he also couldn't live without her. It's a real sad, sick That's piece of shit. Yeah. I agree 100%, Mike. 1.5 million of you, by the way. That's the amount of people who have downloaded and listened to the That Chapter podcast, which has blown me away. Thank you. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuned in to the podcast. That really means so, so much no to problem, me. No problem, I was kind of nervous you know, when launching it as it was something different. All right. It was a Tom Fuckard story. All right. Oh, my God. That's... Horrifying, and it, see, it just takes one person to ruin so much. That's crazy. Before they, and all she was wanting to do was just, you know, put a little, pay a little bit forward. She was having. A, she just wanted to share. Her success with other people so they could be successful and some piece of shit had to end her life. God only knows what they could have accomplished in the years to come or the kids that they could have had that could have accomplished great things. No one will ever know now because some piece of shit decided their fate for them. It's not fair. And I honestly wish that he didn't take his life like he, he tried but i wish that the cops could have got to him and saved him so he could spend the rest of his life in prison and since he was so obsessed with her feel the pain of never being around her again for the rest of his life that poor mother the mother of all this i bet she she's i bet oh my god ran away barely escaped kids are dead now and that poor lady i've this is i fucked damn mike <laughs> you came in like a wrecking ball and just demolished my brain yeah they had gooped gooped all right 
really enjoyed today's story though and if you all enjoyed today's story as much as i did please go down there leave a thumbs up if you're a fan of the spooky scary strange strange weird things that turn your brain into goop think about subscribing i don't provide earplugs but if you get you some it'll help hold it all in place as always be good to one another i'll see you in the next one bye, -bye. I don't even know what to say, what to think about any of this one. This one was, this one got me, y'all. Like, damn.